What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Montana Method Podcast one more time. As always, your host, Nelson Rodriguez Jr., author of Montana Method, coming at you live every Friday, 12 o'clock. Today, I have a fantastic guest, a gentleman I should have met a long time ago. I don't know how I haven't met him until like five years after I met his significant other, D. She's the best. So we're going to talk about a lot of stuff today, a lot of very exciting stuff, his career, um, what's going on in his life currently, his projects that are coming up, and a lot of stuff that we have in common so I'm really excited to talk to him. Uh, he's the, the second actor I've ever had on the show. Um, and we're going to be able to touch ground on a lot of commonality we have. So I'm really excited for this. Don't miss it. Stick around with my special guest, Mr. Rene Granado. I've been out here hustling all my life. Every day we get into it. Yeah. Really out here in these streets. That's day and night. Like there's nothing to it. Yeah. Renee, welcome to the show. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I'm not going to lie. It's maybe like my third podcast I've done. Oh, that's and cool. And I was like, man, I'd love to be on a podcast. And boom, I, I manifested it. There you go. I manifested it. So I'm really grateful to be here. Definitely. And uh, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. This space is for people who are, are doing something spectacular in their lives. So you're a shoe fit for well, what we like to do. We appreciate you giving us this platform. Of course. So it takes course. a lot to uh, to grow in this field, and having this type of opportunity is, is huge for us. So Definitely. we appreciate it. Yeah, I'm a guy that didn't really – I didn't get a lot of handouts when I just wanted to start my podcast. So whatever I can do – to shed light on something spe- fantastic that someone else is doing, I'm, I'm all for it. You well, know thank I mean? you for that, man. I, no, I agree. We should help. We should help each other, man. And it actually worked out because when I had D on the podcast, I was just starting out. So yeah. now I have a bit of a following, so I, I can I can actually offer a little more value. So it kind of worked out. Good, yeah, man. Know? Help any, any way we can help each other. I'm that's all for it. Works. Definitely, hundred percent. That's the way it works. Yeah, and I think we were talking about it a little bit before we started recording. There's not a lot of representation of Miami mm-hmm. and Cubans and that kind of stuff and that kind of culture outside of Miami. Yeah. So for a person like you, that's like you're in acting and you do things. And, uh, uh, you know, Arlene, obviously, we sure. talked about her. Yeah, of course. Um, I had this conversation with her as well, where I feel not that we're misrepresented. I think we're underrepresented. Yeah, sure. You know, what I mean? as far as the subculture of Miami, who we are. Like what it's like to live here, what we're like, what it's like to grow up in Miami, that kind of stuff. It's kind of so, weird because I feel like, and, and and tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like there's like a little up up uptake, right? Like things are happening. You are seeing Cubans on TV, or th- and all of a sudden it goes, boom, yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It never kind of stays up there, right? Yeah. Until maybe we get like one actor or something that yeah. kind of really makes it, and then you know, like Andy Garcia. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But I feel like yeah, there's some, like there's these little ups and downs when it comes to to, to Cubans and entertainment and going back to why I love Scarface, right? Because yeah. if I I ask this question all the time, yeah. name name a Cuban fictional character besides Tony Montana. You can't. Ricky Ricardo. Yeah, Ricky Ricardo. Yeah, Rick, well, Ricky Ricardo. And was he really fictional? <laughs> he was playing that, himself. He was playing himself. <laughs> he was totally playing himself. You know? 100. And, and obviously, you tell people in my generation or younger, Ricky Ricardo. Unless they watched like Nick at Night when they were kids, they don't mm-hmm. know who that is. They don't know who it is. You know? Yeah. So And then like I said, Andy Garcia, right? No, but again, that was like the nineties. He's the goat. He's the goat. Among, he's the goat. To 100. us, he's like oh, <laughs> yes, you know, he's, he's like Ramses there. the Great. You know what <laughs> he's I mean? up there. But yeah. what's happened since him, right? Like nobody's really Nobody, been able yeah. to You have you have some guys that have been, you know, like um not Danny Pino. You also Vado, you know. Yeah, you got a couple that have yeah. that, that have careers nestor you know? I, can't, I forgot the guy's last name nestor nestor torres nestor torres yeah. yeah yeah no you have you have a couple Who, oscar uh, what was the guy that his andy's good friend the one that that passed away the one that had the uh, que era cabo, and he had the the mustache oh yes, oscar yes, yes. something oscar Ocal. Oh, i forgot his name he oh. was in a bunch of stuff and he was in that movie the lost city with him remember mm-hmm. yeah, yeah the lost Bro, city. talk about a great movie <laughs> yeah that's a good one i was pissed when in that movie that movie didn't really perform you guys. But we go back to the culture, <laughs> right? We go yeah, back. Yeah, it yeah. didn't perform. It was a great movie. It didn't oh perform because God. it just wasn't what people wanted to see. It, I, it was it though. I think really at the end of the day, people all people want to see is a good story. True. You know. I mean, it is. You can have the best actors, the best camera but equipment. If the story everything. sucks. If your story sucks. You think got about nothing. it. How many major actors you can think of that have had really bad movies? Oof. 
I mean, you know, I think all of them pretty all much of them, right? all of them have failures. So it's not really about the actor. It's more and like if they don't have failures. They will have a failure oh. because we all have a failure. Like we're all far from greatness at some point. Hundred percent. It's unfortunate, but it's true. And how many low budget movies or independent movies have we seen where you're like, how did this work? Because it was destined for failure, but it worked. <laughs> but it worked because the. Because it, it was just a good story. Uh, it was a good story. I, I remember that story. And again, I'm so horrible with names, but uh, yeah, I saw this. Uh, it was called The Train Station. The Train Station. Okay. Uh, it's an indie film with um, the the guy who played uh, uh, Winter is Coming, the, the little person. What's his name? Again, horrible with names. But it was an indie film, two actors, dialogue most of the film in a train station. And it was amazing. Hmm. And it was amazing. Cool. You know who I'm talking about. He's a, if he's I saw a, his face, probably. He's, a, yeah. he's a, the little guy, uh, actor, famous guy. Um, oh, my God. I'm just horrible with names. Is it the guy from, that guy from Ga Game of Thrones? Yeah. Yeah, him. Same guy. Oh, okay, Same okay, guy. okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. He was in there with uh, with the guy that played uh, in Will and Grace. The guy oh, that yeah, played yeah. Uh, the boyfriend of of, uh, of Jack. Yeah, yeah. The cop or the, of, of Will, the cop. Yeah, yeah, Them yeah. too. Like, and it was just them, and it was a great film. That's cool. And you could probably tell the budget was like 20 grand. <laughs> because it's, neither of them were famous. At a yeah, neither of them were famous at the time. Mm. They were all starting out. And and it was just a great movie. And and you mm. said it. It was a story. The story kept it moving. You know what's funny? Now I'm I'm thought I, I watch a lot of film as a kid. Mm. Now as of lately I haven't had the chance to just because I'm very I'm very immersed in in what I want to do with my mm. life. And I'm not I'm not too even though I do go back to film for inspiration because I am a writer. Sure. But like modern film, I'm not as connected with it as I was once upon a time. Sure. Like when I was a kid, I had a wall full of VHS tapes, you know, and it I, was... Man, I hate to say it, Nelson, but I just think movies also have gotten kind of crappy, bro. Yeah. I hate to say it because I'm in Coming from an actor, right? That's it, crazy. It, it is because, again, the story, man, they, I don't know what it is. I think they're just trying to... They're trying to... It's more about... They're trying to create movies for too many people. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And trying to make everybody happy. And unfortunately, yeah. that's not the way it works. You have to break some eggs sometimes. You know, and some people aren't going to like it, but that's what makes the movie. hundred percent. You know, it 100%. just is. hundred percent. And so I think we're trying to pander to, you know, a lot of people, make everybody happy. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I want everybody to be happy. But sometimes you just got to give in and do but the film for the art and what it's for. The problem is when you try to make everybody happy, no one's happy. No one's happy. No you one. can. There's no way. Exactly. I mean, you, your own family. Your own family, you can't make everybody happy. No. And that's just a small percentage of the population. That's like four people, five people, if you're lucky, right? And you can't make everybody happy, but the, but Hollywood is trying to do that. And personally, what I think is happening is that it's just backfiring. It's backfiring. The it's, they're suffering. not making good movies. Yeah. And I and I and you know what? It's funny. I saw, um, I was seeing a, a couple, a documentary or something on Instagram, or, and it was about how people are starting to get DVDs again. Mm. The old DVDs. Yeah. Because... First of all, we don't even know what's happening with digital. You never know. They could cut the switch and you lost all your movies, right? 100%. So, and on top of that, people are going back to the older films because, yeah. man, they're just, I don't, my personal opinion, and again, I love what I do and I hope I could do it to the day I die, but I just wish that, yeah, we would just, like, start making some some. The same thing movies. is happening in, in music. A lot of very famous, like Taylor Swift, they're selling CDs mm -hmm. because they basically, if you think about it, it's, it's a collector's item, right? It's a collector's item right now. So... Yeah. yeah, I have a good friend of mine. Vinyl's here. coming back. Oh, my God. Huge. Huge, huge coming back They're making, back like, vinyl. these Bluetooth record players. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that? I have. I, I have. was like, I couldn't even know you, you could can, combine them. You can get them at Marshall's for 60 bucks. That's crazy. And they're beautiful. They're old school little, they're old school Bluetooth record players. They close, like, little cases, just like, you know, we what, what probably, your, my, you know, our parents used to have Look back at that, in the day. Bro. Yeah, and I think it, the resurgence of the old is because the new sucks. I hate to say it, but I, I yeah. have to agree with you. Even though I don't want to, I mean, this is the eternal thing, right? Like. Old old people talk. I mean, I'm not old, and neither are you. But I'm saying, yeah. the older generation always complains about kids. However, I think there's moments in history where things <laughs> kind of line were up. We're legit. Those yeah. are, those complaints are legit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because I I always remind myself because new a fresh perspective is never bad, right? Of course. So I always try to re remind myself like the reason people become evil is because you, you're apathetic. You don't you don't. You don't like other people. You don't like the way they think. Mm -hmm. You don't like the way they say things. And obviously where our, our families come from, we know what that's like, sure. right? So I always try to remind myself the reason those people are like that is because they don't want to listen to anybody else. And so it's like, all right, give them a chance. Listen yeah. to them. All right, now if you listen to them, you're like, all right, this sucks. I'll be at the answer. You know, it's like whatever. Exactly. So my that's my thing. I give people a chance, but then there's like, all right, you know, this is this is trash. 
You know, yeah, so. not, and I hate to say it, but we're, we're giving credit to some people that personally like, don't yeah, deserve you're okay, time but credit. you don't really deserve yeah, all exactly. that credit, man. I'm sorry. So I'm I'm a person who, as a writer, I'm working on a comic book. I'm not sure if she's She had me. mentioned it, yeah. yeah and I'm, I'm, I'm a huge comic fan, so. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to Bro, it. Bro, we have I'm a lot of comics. That's crazy. So what's crazy is that's like my holy my holy grail, my chips all in, what, what I hope to leave behind and what I hope to turn, like bring me to the yeah. world or what I'm remembered for the day I die is that I'm Nice. I'm gonna work hard to turn that into a comic book, make it mainstream, turn it into a TV show. Like that's nice. my that's my your kid, you know what I mean? That's what's, nice, nice. Um, and I the reason I actually started writing a comic book, the story's pretty funny, is because same thing in the comic book industry, there's no stories suck. Yeah, the stories they lately suck. are weird, man. And they're hiring writers that are hacks that are not good. So what are they doing? They're getting this person and oh, retelling the story as oh, they're a woman or oh, as they're they're a minority. Trying to please, they're just going back to trying to please. And it's like, bro. And then their justification is, oh no, but they, they, this this demographic is underrepresented because Wonder Woman isn't a phenomenal <laughs> female character. Because Black Panther didn't sell two billion dollars worth of tickets. What are you guys talking about? So originality works. Works, man. Originality works. Yeah. So I got tired of complaining about it because they're, ah, comic book sales were down. Down, yeah. So what did I do? I was like, there's no Cuban superheroes. There's no superheroes set where the setting is Miami. The setting is always in New York. The people are always like this. You know what? Instead of bitching and moaning or making Captain Cubanazo, <laughs> I'm gonna make a Cuban character, and that's what Qué I did. Well, I mean. Yeah, <laughs> that's, his, that's his tag. Okay, well, uh, criminals, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That is so cool. Also, Hialeah uh, style. Hialeah style, baby. Eli appreciates that. Eli appreciates. Of course, that. of course. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make Cuban superheroes. I love that. And I'm gonna make the setting in Miami. I love it. And it's gonna be a smash hit. You know why? Because it's original. I have a hundred percent faith in what I'm writing it because it's original. Yeah. I feel. As if this really cool original idea, people are gonna resonate with. Nice. Because all right, yeah, they're Cuban characters, and the setting is Miami, but you don't. Ha I don't have to be like you to understand what you're going through. Yeah. You know why people love Batman? Because the guy doesn't have superpowers. Mm -hmm. Everybody can relate to the guy. Yeah. He, he's just a normal guy who doesn't quit it. Yeah. Like his his spine could be broken. He could be poisoned. Anything can happen to that guy, and everybody's like, "Bro, how's he gonna do it?" And he does it. And he he does figures it. it out. Yeah. It goes to show you, like, I, that Batman's my favorite superhero. It goes to show you, like, people relate to the guy, and he's probably, arguably, if not really is, the most popular superhero in history. Yeah. Because of that, it's it's because he doesn't have superpowers, and he still figured out a way to win every single fight. And I think in. also, like, uh, like Spider-Man, I think they're the closest to real people. Yeah. And I think that yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what people want to see themselves Sp in. Spider-Man is another one where they write a lot about his relationships. Like he has the special powers, yeah. right? He, and he got it, but he's still a kid he trying to with deal with his real life everyday issues. life yep. issues, you know? And I think that's why Marvel jumped mm -hmm. to where it did and beat out mm -hmm. DC a bit is because they were they were going a little more to the person. Like you right, said, right, right. it does place... And it does take place in New York, not Gotham City, which is exactly. you know, fictitious. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So I think that's, but but at, at the same time, you have Batman who has no powers. He's just he's fought his way through. You know, he's through a businessman. Right? He's a thing. He's like you know. So yeah, those are also my two favorite characters: Batman and Spider Man, and then Superman. You can't. You can't yeah. he's a super fan. I'm just Batman versus Superman is always like that eternal thing. Whoever likes Superman doesn't like Batman. Whoever doesn't like Batman doesn't like. I Superman. love both of them. Bro. I love to see him go at it. Yeah, <laughs> no, best. yeah, me too. No, the argument <laughs> me amongst me because I have a friend who likes Superman. And he's like, I just have to tell Batman about his parents. And he cries. <laughs> oh, he, he cries. <laughs> and I'm like, which bro. I have to tell you though, that 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 Bat that Superman v Batman or whatever, which one the title was, where he's the mother where. Where he's beating the crap out of him, he's like Martha. And, oh yeah, and yeah, that, yeah. that stopped everything. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry, but when our wait, first of all, eso no le pasa un cubano, boy. When we get hot, <laughs> ni su mamá te va, ni la mamá lo para, okay? <laughs> ni el nombre de mamá ni el papá ni nada. Nobody. You could say the whole family's yeah. name. The guy's still gonna do whatever he's gonna do. <laughs> so I kind of found that like, mm, all right, okay, all right, yeah. you didn't kill him because okay. he said your mom's right. name. No, 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 all right. for sure. So. But yeah, that eternal battle is like, oh, he's gonna cry if you talk about his parents. And the owner's like, I just have to whip out a little green rock. Oh, yeah. and, and he dies. There's both like such, such simple such cliches, some cliches, yeah. but yeah, some simple takedowns, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A rock and a name. <laughs> yeah, but that's like a, that's like I don't even know how to describe it. That's, that's like, like a David and Goliath. Type. It yeah. is. Yeah. There's a little it, rock, la pedrita, so that I met Oh wow, a David and Goliath. Huh? That metaphor. Oh, that, I didn't just think hit me of right that. now. Wow, holy crap! Yeah. And then you have like the god with the powers, and then you have like a regular. Wow, look at that! 
I wonder if and whoever wrote it thought of that. I, I wonder. Wow, just right now, we just discovered something. At least in this in this room. <laughs> know, maybe someone else. That's interesting. I never thought about it. Yeah. Damn. You know, it's funny. I see those metaphors in like in different stories. So the reoccurring thing of Jesus, I see it in every single religion. If you notice, you know, the whole thing with Thor and Os and Odin, and then you have Zeus and, and mm -hmm. his yeah, mm -hmm. and then in Egyptian mythology you have Osiris and Horus. Mm -hmm. Like I, I see those parallels. Yeah. I, I always see those stories. Um, oh, I'm sure. I'm sure that I'm sure they had to have taken. Yeah, one hundred percent. Star Wars took it. I'm sure they all. Yeah, yeah. They all took from. I, those I always see those mirror parallels of like mm -hmm. that. That's an interesting one. Though. Definitely. That's pretty Definitely. Cool. The and then you also have if you're talking about the um, like dark versus light. You have mm -hmm. the like the. You know what? You can even argue that they're two halves of the same person. They have to be. You don't have dark without yeah. light. Yeah. Because Batman is like this super. <laughs> And then Superman's is like goody two shoes. Super, you know, justice for all guy. Everything, yeah. all his colors are bright. Man, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's like it's like the Joker and Batman, right? Like they can't live without Oof. each other. I think Superman and Batman can't kind of coexist without each other. Yeah, no way. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. always in some type of conflict. Always. Yeah. In some type of conflict. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. And then you can also argue that if it wasn't so, Superman is this invulnerable guy. But if it wasn't for the fact that like Batman is like the super detective who figures everything out. He would never win, like, cause every time I see them working together, it's like Superman's brain is what, oh, they win, cause, of, but he's the brawn, but he needs this guy, and yeah. then, but also like, oh, in some cases I need this guy, cause I need to go like into outer space but, to destroy bro, an asteroid. I'm telling you, the yin and yeah, yang, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. We need they, they work well. That's why they're part of the Justice League, hand right? Hand in hand, yeah, that's yeah. That's why yeah. they're part of the Justice League. They they yep. they work together well, Definitely. but they need each other for sure. You know. That's interesting. The world and could learn a lesson from that, right? For sure, 100%. Especially right now. Especially right now. Because we're so... We're so divided right now, bro. It's man, it's sad to see. Be even the with people you. I agree with, I try to tell them, like, just because you think you're right doesn't mean you are, you are right. Yeah. Because even though I, even I agree with you, you have to understand that right is nothing more than, like, a perspective. Because if I tell you what, what's a hot issue right now, okay, men and women... This whole thing about alpha males and beta mm -hmm. males and male and female polarity. There's things that I don't consider myself a beta, but there's some things, quote unquote, beta males tell me. And I'm like, all right, I could kind of see things that way. Oh, I'm, def you know I'm definitely I mean? in the middle, man. Oh. I'm definitely in the middle. I mean, being an actor, I have to take care of myself, you know. So I have my creams and my stuff I do at night. No joke. <laughs> no cap. <Hey. laughs> <laughs> and I like it, bro. Yes, I like it. I like putting me granita. No, but I get garita. my hands and my feet done. You, you know, know I, you know? I get my feet done. My, you know, you have to, man. Yeah, Look, yeah. first of all, I was having this conversation with my beautiful fiance over here. Men need to take care of each other. Men, yeah. men need to take care of themselves. 100%. Okay. Period. I, I, I don't understand why we need to turn into these, you know, cro magnum men once we meet our beautiful, <laughs> significant others. If anything, you should. It should be the opposite. If anything, you should stay and even do more. Hundred percent. To, to stay to what she remembers. 100%. You know? Bueno, see, if she met you as a Cro Magnum man, go, lo, se hasta aquí, cayendo por arriba, bueno, then go for it. Right, 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 right. Stay as you are. But, oh, man, if you like clean cut, you know, and your nails are cut, you get little manicures because you're trying to impress the chicks, bro, stay like that when you get your to chick. To impress the chick, yeah. Right, stay yeah, like yeah. that to impress the chick. And oh. I hope I hope that I, done, I do that. <laughs> Not just because of my acting. There you go. <laughs> but no, you know. So um. So yeah. So anyways, that, that was a little rant. No, Sorry. but you're you're right, and it's funny because you hear people all the time say, "Oh no, it's not like it used to be." Maybe because you don't act the way you used Maybe to. Because you don't act the way you used to. You know, you still gotta yeah. do the things. I we try. You know, we do our. We still. Do, huh? No, no hair, bro. Ear hair. Eso me cae. <laughs> <laughs> when I see the older the older guys with the ear hair, I'm like, man, tu esposa no te dice nada. Bro, right? Tu esposa no te dice nada. That's like crazy. she actually likes you looking like some some troll from oh my from, god from third world the, or the troll <laughs> under the bridge from Lord <laughs> yeah, of the Rings. Exactly. What's his name? Uh, well, then we wouldn't let you pass it. Yeah, Rubble yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah Rubble Stilton. You know what I mean? Like what? Like come on, man. Just uh, it's not so hard. Just take a couple of tweezers and plug. <laughs> It'll take you ten minutes tops <laughs> of your day. <laughs> no, I I completely agree. 
A hundred percent. I'm the guy who looks at myself in the mirror six times before I leave the you house. You have to, man. Especially now that I'm on camera all the time. You know what I mean? You know? A hundred percent. You have to show. You know, the scruff to... is more like a look or whatever. But aside <laughs> yeah. from that, you know, no ear hair, no nose hair. No, 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 hair, no. A know? scruff is the look. Yeah, the scruff yeah, is the look. Yeah, yeah. It's like I got this thing going on now. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. the look. But oh, you got to take care of yourself. La manito, lo yeah. piecito. hundred percent. You know, the armpits, don't let freaking like... Don't let a jungle grow out there like you're I think it's Vietnam. only fair that it, like, if, if, like, my woman is being, obviously, being, like, doing things for me, you know, well, shaving yeah. and keep saying, I should do the same She's for her. She's doing her part. You should yeah, do yeah. yours. 100%. You know? I'm with that. I, mean, yeah. I live in, you know, I, I lived in Hialeah, grew up in Hialeah, and I lived in the same house for 25 years. Coño. So real, real. That's real Cuban. That's real Cuban. Ladies Cuban. and gentlemen. Eso es Whoever, Whoever's not from Miami, <laughs> the Cubans that were born and bred in Hialeah are, like, that's North Cuba. That's <laughs> mm -hmm. Cuba. That's like that's the Cuba 19th, 19th like province. Earth two. Like Earth 2, that's Cuba too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, like I stayed there. So, I, uh, you know, I met, you know, my, my, my neighbors grew old with me, you know. Mm. And then like, I love my next door neighbor. It's so funny. <laughs> you know, I feel like to the bro, <laughs> come on. Arregla un poquito. You know, but like I better, you know, you love him either guy. way. So. He's like this 80-year-old Cuban guy. I already know what's up. He's got like the hair to here. He's got the nose hairs that look like a mustache. <laughs> Bro, what happens, bro? He's like the guy that wears the shorts and forgets, doesn't put on underwear anymore because he doesn't care. And you see like the outline of, of his his, you know what? Oh and it's God. like hanging it down. What to is here. going on? What is going on? Dude? Yeah, bro. That's why I wear a boxer briefs, bro. That don't ever happen to me. Hundred percent, bro. Hundred percent. No. I look at those old guys and I'm like, bro, am I gonna turn into that? Like, <laughs> it's possible, dude. I think it just happens, bro. Listen, I, I already, I already catch myself going. Man, bro, in my day, bro, that's no bazaar, you know? That's that's kind of the equivalent yeah, of one. Yeah, in yeah. my day, I used to walk five, seven miles without shoes. And yeah. I mean, my goals, I think we all go through it. We all go through it. We all eventually go through it, but with our modern technology. 100%. You know? But when do in we... In my day, I used a map. You know? <laughs> I used a paper map. I didn't have that quick phone. <laughs> but, all right, but check this out. So, how about when do we start turning into, like, wearing the hats... The random hats, you know, the USA hats, <laughs> the security hats, <laughs> the, the the they have fifty t shirts, <laughs> the fifty different t shirts that make no sense. No, I got the shirts. I got the tees. The I USA. Got the, tell I me, got, I'm not on board with the no, USA no, hats. No, one hundred percent. They're all patriots. <laughs> they're all patriots. they're all Republicans. They're all, <laughs> they're all like pro Trump. And it's like, look, I get it, bro, but coño, like... Oh, my God, you know that's I mean? awesome, man. That's <laughs> awesome, the USA hats. And they don't speak English. It's and the crazy part, English. right? <laughs> they don't speak English, but USA, man. USA. It's USA. Bro. That's just a fu that's funny, man. You can know we what curse it? on this? Can yeah, we curse you can here? say whatever you want. Right, yeah, just yeah. Want to make it's sure. YouTube. It's not... It's okay. A, no, no, but you know, some people like to keep it clean. So nah, I mean, see, you know, if a bad word, let's... Oh, whatever. Okay, you know? okay. But yeah, I I, I pre you know what it is. I think once you pass a certain age, you're like, bro, I, this is a free ride. I, I don't give a flying that's, rat's bro, ass honestly, anymore. Honestly, that's exactly what it is. It's, <laughs> it's not that you you just don't care anymore. Yeah, bro. yeah. You yeah. don't. You just want to kind of be like, bro, I just want to rest right now. I just want to yeah, yeah. tranquilo, sentarme a ver un poquito de eso. And like, you lo you lose your filter. You lose yeah, everything. You're you like, lose bro, a filter. Bro, no listen, you don't give a crap. What are they gonna do to you? Get the one that the world hasn't already done to you. <laughs> exactly. Nothing. At that point. And if you made it past a certain age, bro. It's a free ride. It's a free ride. You deserve it. Definitely. You deserve it. I think I'm there already. No say. I'm, 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 I'm a few years there. <laughs> nah, <laughs> coño. You're not 80, <laughs> coño. But look, I just, the funny thing is, I know this from experience because I grew up around a lot of older people. Yeah, I grew same. up around all my si my grandparents' siblings. So I might the abuelos, the abuelas, uh, granduns, and granduncles for those who don't speak that's, Spanish. And that's beautiful, man. Yeah. That's not a lot of, not a lot no, of for that, me, so it was a blessing. Beautiful. I grew up around my great-grandmother. Oh, man. She was, she was the matriarch of our family. That's beautiful. So, yeah, yeah. She was like... The leader. And, bro, growing up around all those old people, I saw these things. Yeah, you know, that they yeah, were yeah. just like... No, and my great-grandmother didn't play, bro. She was like... Cuban, obviously, right? Bro, yeah, Yeah, so they come from... Bro, on bro. top of the fact, forget about life. Forget about life. Yeah, yeah. Going through what they went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mano, forget about life. Just going through that. And then coming know? here. Which yeah. scares me because a lot of the stuff I'm seeing lately, bro... <sighs> A yeah. lot of the stuff I'm seeing lately, you and I have heard it in our home. We have. We've yeah, heard yeah. the stories in our home, and it's scary, bro. It's really scary. I talk to I talk to my fiance all the time. It's scary because, man, you see people talk like, like you really don't know, man. You don't know. That's that's something that surprised me. Like, when you talk to, obviously, in Miami, we know what that's like. But sure. I've had conversations with friends of mine from New York or Las mm -hmm. Vegas or California. Friends of mine that live all over the country and they come to Miami and then they hear about the story of like my uncle that got lost to sea on a raft. And he's like, wait, your uncle did what? Your uncle they jumped on a, 
yeah, and you explain to them, listen, bro, Cuba's like this. Like, they don't let them leave the country, and they can't even... It's so crazy. It sounds like we're talking about, like, a fictional story. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's I crazy. remember when I was in New York. I, I went to New York. I did a show called Amparo. Um, I remember. She had told me about it. Yeah, yeah and it was about the uh, it was about the Arachavala family. Yeah. Who were the original creators of the Havana Club Room. Right. The original creators of the family. Uh, they, they're still in Spain. The family's still in Spain making rum. And they um, make it in Puerto Rico now, right? And yeah. now, well, because what happened was that uh, my character... I did a show. I was the lead character in that. Um, and it, Ramon, he was the top salesman of the family in Cuba. Oh, wow. And when they threw him out of the factory, like they came in one day and, and kicked everybody out, he stole the recipe oh. of the Havana Club Rum. And from from that point on, which was man, uh, 19, 1960, 61, I think, he's been, he, was, he came to Miami and he tried to recreate that rum. But, you know, all that takes money. And they literally went from the richest family in Cuba, in Cárdenas, to literally nothing, like nothing. That's our story. His wife said, "Like, I I wore an apron for the first time here." <laughs> That's crazy, you know. And uh, and yeah, and, and and then so what happens? That he 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 took the recipe and uh, a week before, obviously after a long period of time of trying uh, to convince Bacardi to buy it and make it himself, he ends up selling it to Bacardi, mm. and he ends up dying a week later. Wow. It's like he had to get that done. That's crazy. He was walking around with oxygen tanks. He would go to the Bacardi office with, with oxygen tanks. Wow. And then and literally the week after he sells, he passes away. That's it's insane. like he left his mark, his legend. That's it, my legacy. His my legacy. purpose was to leave this legacy and, and my, and he my life it. is complete. Yeah. And um and, and it was interesting because man, I you know, when I was in New York, there were some there's some heavy scenes in that show. And I never thought that I would hear someone say, Viva Fidel. Wow. Yeah. I was like, man, that's crazy. And that's I never crazy. forget one of our actors, uh, Hector Medina, which is an amazing actor. Um, if, you haven't, if you haven't heard of him, he's, he's now and just finished shooting a film in New York with Al Pacino. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, he just got here from Cuba like six years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hardly speaks a lick of English. But he's just an amazing, amazing That's actor. Cool. One of my dearest friends. Um, and he, uh, I remember he, he has a speech that he says in the play. And when that guy said that, he literally just stood right in front of him. And he just laid that speech on him only. <laughs> just on him. He says, Renee, I didn't take my eyes off of him. And the guy got so uncomfortable, he left the show. It's, bro. He left the show. That's crazy, bro. That that right there will show you the power of an actor. Yeah, and and then coming from him, who has literally lived it, he doesn't know anything. And else. just left it. He you know? and just left it, and for you to tell him Viva Fidel, bro, that's 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 yeah. hard. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's hard. So 100%. I'm so happy that he did that, and I'm so happy he got. And it happened to me too sometimes here in the, in Miami when we did the show. You know, I don't think so much as the as you know the communist love, but just the 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 laughing and you know. And I would do the same thing. I had a huge monologue that talked about everything getting taken away from me, everything my family's ever worked for. We have nothing. And I would just direct it at that one person. Like, I would get literally, like, inches from them. And I would love seeing their smile and their little giggles turn to Just nothing. like this dead face. Just show. turn to a dead, like, oh, I'm not supposed to be laughing here. <laughs> no, motherfucker. Yeah, Sorry. exactly. <laughs> You're not supposed to be yeah, laughing yeah, here. Yeah, We're yeah, in a yeah, fucking yeah. jail cell. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 100%. And I'm literally telling you everything my character's lost in his life. And you're laughing. You know? And I'm not going to allow it. So I'm not going to allow it. It's not, it's not, it's the story, bro. Because, yeah. The story. The story, man. Obviously, actors are, are the storytellers. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a skill. But as long as you know how to tell that story and you have a good story, you could change the world, man. You could change the world, man. And, and let me tell you, I had the, 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 the pleasure, because normally you don't, as, as an actor, when you do a show, you kind of go, you know, you go backstage and you're done. Right. And you don't see the, 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 um, the crowd the crowd till after. And by that time, you know, if you have dispersed already, maybe you have a, a few stragglers that want to hang out and meet you. Um, but in this case, we had the opportunity that, that to myself and, and my co-actor to open the doors and let everybody out. Oh, wow. Into like this rum garden. And so we got to literally say goodbye to everybody that came to the show. And I, had, and I had so many of the older generation tell me, this is incredible. Like, you guys have been able to tell this, our story. Mm. And some with tears. 
No, I could imagine. So I'm with tears. Young kids coming up to me and telling me, man, I didn't know this story. And to be here with my grandparent and see them literally change in front of me, mm. like, I need to know more. I need to ask them more about That's this. That's important. And that is what really touched me. Like, it got emotional. That really touched me. And then on top of that, I got to meet a lot of the family members of my character. Wow. And for them to tell me, man, you, you are him. I get emotional. I got to slow down a bit. <laughs> Can't cry on camera. But he, they, they would tell me, you, you were him. For those two and a That's half amazing. hours, you were him. That's really cool, man. And so that, like for an actor, to hear his own wife. Yeah. His own wife told, told me, you, I, I, I said, I hope I made you proud. And he said, you made you... You made me proud in every possible. And that's what we've we've lost in storytelling. You you understand not mm -hmm. now whoever's watching understands what we were talking about. It's not two guys ranting. That essence of the story that can change somebody's life, that essence of a story that's so powerful no one can deny it when they see it. Yeah. Everyone is like, Wow. Yeah. Just oh my God, Michael Corleone, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, Tony Montana, you know, like all these all these classic characters that yeah told such a powerful story that they were just undeniable it's just like there's no words there's to no describe words it. it yeah you can't that's what we've lost yep that and and, and then power it's, and then it's funny because sorry to interrupt before i lose my that thought but it's funny because part of what people see right cubans or the ones that have that have grown up here right or or even even out, out there out of, outside of miami is que pasa USA. right that's what they know us as right and, and I saw it, and I truly saw it because I did another show right after a battle called The Cubans at the Colony Theater on Miami Beach on Lincoln Road. And it was called The Cubans, and it was a, a, an interesting play because the first half, the family is amazing. Mm. They're doing great. Everything's great. And it was a total capacity USA. The laughters, the things about Everything. Yeah, everything. Yeah. The total laughters. I played Tio Pepe. <laughs> you know, with all the crazy sayings right, and the right. mariconeria and yeah, all that. Yeah, you know. yeah, all that stuff. But then the second half of the show, when we come back, Right before the show ended, uh, um, one of the family members, the son, who was coming home from school, got into a bad car accident. Oh, like wow. right when the show ends. And at the beginning of the second act, the whole the family's totally different. Everybody's somber. That same, that same joking. And can you believe that people didn't like that? Really? Yeah. They didn't like that. They said that it took a turn. I mean, that, but that's the point of telling a story. You're supposed to not only that. Supposed do, to be do, dynamic. We, do Cubans not have uh, stories that that destroy a family? Yeah, of course. <laughs> no, the problem is that they came thinking they were gonna see que pasa, que pasa USA. USA. Yeah, and they got sideswiped when we threw that that, in that there, boulder yeah. at them. <laughs> you know, so it's just interesting, right? They couldn't get past not all of them, but a good portion couldn't right. get past that fun, laughing, you know, Definitely. portion of the show. Which because that's what they expected out of us, right? Which if if you think about it, nowadays if we go into my realm of social media, the the ones who are doing well as far as Cubans, they're really comedians. Yeah. Are really the only ones we're talking about, uh, Caballo and Mario Romeo and mm -hmm. Dairon Vasquez. Even if you want to talk about Marcelo, he's the only one who's really broken who's, out. Yeah, he broke out. Yeah, you know, which I'm super happy for him. Yeah, and he, he's truly brought like. Great comedy. That's no, not all, bro. very good. Every, his kids are like very good. Yeah, they're funny. Very as hell. funny. Very so super smart. happy for him. Yeah, right? definitely, hundred percent. But it goes back to what I'm saying. Like, I guess we're that comedic aspect of who we are, which is true. You know, it's not. It's, we have it's it. authentic. <laughs> yeah, it's authentic <laughs> for sure. hundred percent. You know, yeah. Everybody knows <laughs> what happens when you lose a game of dominoes at a family. <laughs> oh my god! Don't even get me started. That's like the end of the world. Well, like my friend Hector, like my friend Hector says. Why me si sabe cómo me porto. Hundred percent. Why do you invite me if yeah. you know how I'm gonna get? Like, yeah. You know? We are more than that, though. We are more. We're so much more. And that, that buys into the Miami. Oh, party! Yeah, the other joder. Everything's fun. And but Miami has a a very hardworking class who went through mm -hmm. a lot. Who there's a darker side of what we went through, and there's also some inspir a lot of inspirational stories. So yeah, we are in that aspect. I do see that the comedic element is really just really what we're known for. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, makes you know, sense. and we'll take it. No, I'm not we'll saying it's a bad it, thing. You know, but there are more. There is more to it. But I think that's also why this kind of took off, right? The, mm. the, the Scarface. Thing. Yeah, and because that was it's. If you think about it, most most people like the happy ending. This is a tragedy. Tragedy. Total tragedy. I mean, what gets worse than dying? Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> I don't think anything. And that's so. Here's here's another reason why I resonate with this movie. 
I've grown a lot through my darkness. Whenever I go through really trying times is when I come out, like, because I've understood now that without going through that, what is life? Yeah. Life is just this never ending we'll happy. Go back to the black and white. Oh, 100%. We'll go back to the yin and yang. We need. Yin and yang. You right? need the dark and the light to coexist. 100%. 100%. It, right now, if we shut off all the lights here, we cut everything out. We, we literally, sh we, we blinded the lights, everything. What are we going to see? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But. The moment one little light shines, everything opens up. But if you do the opposite, if you make the light super bright and mm -hmm. there's no darkness you, whatsoever. Right. You could, you're not going to see anything either. Mm. There's no shadows to give you all the, all the, all the depth. So you're never going to, you're just going to be this one-sided. So it's just needed, man. It's needed. So, I, I'll, so I'll take, I'll take the humor. But know that we can do serious work too. A hundred percent. You know, and that's that's what I was saying. Like Tony, he was a very complex character, and that complexity is humans. That's who we are as humans. Yeah. And even the stories I'm writing right now, they're very complex. You're not gonna like my character. He does things that you're just like, bro, what a piece of garbage. But you understand why he does them, mm. and you actually kind of feel sorry for him. Mm. I call it the Tony Soprano effect, because Tony Soprano was. Was the protagonist. Yep. But he was really an antagonist. Um, he was a bad guy. A hundred percent. But you but loved somehow him. we rooted for that guy. No matter what. We rooted no matter for him. How many times he killed somebody. <laughs> no matter how times he, he punched someone. Like this, whatever. We rooted for him. And even at the end, you're like, what happened to him? What happened to our guy? Like, and this is like he's a leader of mafia, for God's sake. For the mob family. Like, yeah, it's it's and I love that. I absolutely love that because that represents what humanity is. Yeah. Like, my father, he's a great guy, but there's many times throughout his life where I was like, bro, what are you doing? Yeah. But I still love him because he's my he's father. He's your dad, bro. And that's humanity. We were, sorry. We were watching the, <laughs> we were watching the Kardashians yesterday. <laughs> uh, and they literally said the same thing. Like, they were saying that they were having issues. They're like, you know, you're still my mom. I love you. Exactly. Like, I'm here to support you. You're my mom. 100%. Doesn't mean we're not going to have issues. Bro, at the end of the you day, know? that's what that's what humanity is. So you can't pay. That's why another, re like I said, I, I always go back to him because it's not just like, oh, the Tony Montana y esto lo otro. There's so many parts of that film that represent what humanity really is and who I am as a person specifically. Mm -hmm. That darkness had, has, has brought out the best out of me. Like, I'm a very positive person. I like to bring good things to the, help as many people as I can. I'm always listening to positivity, listening to new books, re, you know, going to seminars, learning from people, trying to network. I'm, I'm that positive yeah, guy, yeah. but it's because I, of the dark, grueling, yeah, you know painful that, you know, things. You know what's out there, bro. You know what's out there. I mean, I listen, I, I don't like talking about it, but like, I, I lost both my parents at a young age. Yeah. And I truly believe, you know, I, didn't, I, I processed, right? I went through my dark time, my real dark times. But I processed it enough that I I was able to turn it around and use that as as a gift mm. in my acting. You know, and, and there were a few times in that jail cell in in Amparo. Or that's where you were. That's yeah. where I was. Because my character didn't know if he was gonna see his family again. He didn't know if he was gonna see his wife again. There's a moment in the show where he gets thrown in jail and in real life the story goes that a guard had like a change of heart nobody knew where he was his family his mom, his wife hadn't heard from him in 10 days because they just took him and right. threw him in jail and you know and this guard had a change of he just had a i don't know something happened and he gave him a phone call and he told him if anybody finds out about this we're all dead and he gave him the phone they they called each other they literally said each other's names they started crying, and that's it. And the guy took the phone away from because someone was coming. And that's all there was. So that that moment when that guard opened would open that door, that little window, all I could think about was like, man, I'm never going to see my mom again. And it takes a toll on you oh, of course. as an actor because you're really going in deep, and you got to be careful you don't go too deep. And how many shows did you do? We did, um, we ran for eight months. <laughs> And I did two shows a night, four days a week. So it's not like a movie set where, like, all right, I'm done. It's, you f you felt like a movie set because you, of how real everything was. Right, right, right. right? right, right. It, was it was built into a mansion. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't a stage. It was built into a mansion, so all the rooms had a set in it. And wow. the And the guests, it was an immersive experience. So the guests would be in the show. That's the amazing. guests were part of the show. Right. And, and, that, and they would literally, people would get taken to jail. 
people would get moved around by militia people would get taken to the to to the militia right to to the the militia and then they, and they would train them like if they were going to be part wow. of the militia so it was a very immersive you know so we had a lot of people like a lot of older generation kind of flip out one gentleman took the rifle from one of the militias and pointed it at him wow yeah and the security had to come and yeah, you yeah, know yeah, yeah. another person down with it though and then you hear the daughter puppy it's just a show calm down like that's how you know because at one moment you'd be in a party and the next thing you know You're militia like... everywhere taking over and kicking you out mm. you know and so yeah it's it's interesting man it's interesting that, it's interesting yeah. how that works and that's but going... you gotta go there yeah. you gotta go there sometimes that's that's what i'm saying the boxer when he's about to die in a boxing match where do you think he's going in his head bro what makes him get up what makes him when he has absolute because uh, i was an amateur boxer at one point so I know what it's like to get punched straight in your face and be looking up at the roof and being like, "What? What just happened?" No, I'm being like, "Why? <laughs> Why what is I gonna make me get up right now?" And you go to the fact that, like, bro, you just first go to you question your place. life. I'm sure. What am I doing here? No, no yeah, yeah, for sure. The first <laughs> thing is like, bro, questions. how did I volunteer to be here? <laughs> Much less do this for free, <laughs> you know? For at free, least Mike volunteer. Tyson gets paid ten million dollars a fight. I'm here like. Because I like I'm a masochist. No, but you're, you're, you're you like it. and it that's just the experience of life. That like again, I, I see all these metaphors, right? I go back to that. And that's just what life is. When when you get the crap kicked out of you, you're just laying there and you're like, bro, like what am I doing? Yeah. You question your life. Yeah. And it's like where you have to go, or I'm gonna speak for myself, where I have to go to be like, no, 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 get up. This isn't you. You're not a quitter. Like where I have to go in my brain, I have to I have to go to this really dark place, yeah. Yeah, no. and I think it's really again the human experience, the life and the positivity and the creation that can come from that dark motivation. It's huge, man. It's huge. I can't explain and it. And and yeah, and I think I think you don't realize until you have to until you go through it, and There's, that's that's the pr unfortunate part out of it. It is, but it but is it really though? It's, it's unfortunate and fortunate, I guess. But, right. but the fact that you have to go through it sucks. It's it <laughs> sucks, but at the same time, it yeah. could be your biggest blessing. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So if hopefully you have someone smart enough to tell you, hey, just go through it. I guarantee, and I and trust me, you there, will be better coming on the other side. One hundred percent. Yeah. It's just, yeah, but it's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. But it makes it, us stronger, and, and again, it does. The yin, the yin, yin and the yang, bro. 100%. Without it, we're nothing. Absolutely nothing. You know, that's that's just whoever. I I also think of it this way: if I created a human, if I wanted to make him patient, would I just snap my fingers and make him patient? No, no. I'd make him go through things to make him patient. No. If I wanted him to be compassionate, what would I do? I I'd, I'd make him get mugged. I I try to kill him. I do all these things to him to make him understand there's horrible people on this planet. Do not be like them. Yeah. Be different. Yeah. When someone cuts you off in traffic, when an old lady needs to cross the street, when someone's begging you for a dollar, help them. Yeah. If you can, obviously. If you can, obviously, sure. But so help. you understand what it's like to get told no or for a family member to die or for to be, you know, I've been mugged. That that feeling of feeling violated. I can't imagine, but I've never been mugged. But I've been, I, I got imagine. mugged for the first time. I've been mugged more than once, but uh, I got mugged for the first time when I was 12 years old wow. by three adults in my neighborhood where I lived. No, I've told the story live on the podcast. It was crazy. I got mugged. I ran home. My mom, my mother, God bless her soul. My mother was feared in my neighborhood. Like no one fucked with my mom. Nobody. <laughs> awesome. She was the only Cuban single mom. Well, no, at the time she had, she was with my stepdad, but before he even showed up, no one came to my house. No one messed with us. So that day I run home and I'm like, mom, mom, I just got mugged. So she starts, ah! Like screaming, she runs out the door, and I'm like, "Mom, I didn't tell you who I didn't tell, <laughs> I didn't you, who tell it was. you who it was." She's running out the door, and my stepbrother and my and my oh. my sister had pulled up in the car, and they're like, "Oh, I found them, bro! I haven't told anybody who it was. How do you guys know?" So we go around the corner, and my mom has a kitchen knife in her hand, and she's yelling at three dudes on a porch, and they're like, "What the fuck?" And she's like, ah, "If I find out it was you, I'm gonna chop your fucking head off." And I'm like, "Mom, it wasn't them." She's like, "No, nah, but they know who it is." That's wild. I'm not even done. So we hop in the car, and then my stepbrother's like, no, no, they're around the corner. They're so we pull up to this bus stop, and it, the three of them were with seven other guys. My mom hops out of the car with the kitchen knife, because I took it from her. She takes it back from my hand, hops out of the car, and she's like, which one of you motherfuckers took my son's lunch money? All this stuff, because they took my iPad and my, my, my iPod and my lunch money. 
bro, they scattered like roaches. It was crazy. I'm talking about one woman That's against. That's wild, bro. No, my mother. Bro. Ba- Baba, I would say, man, like, don't a woman scorn. Yeah, yeah. So, but that feeling of, of, and the story goes on. My stepdad showed up. And, no, 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 no. Ba- ba- <laughs> it's crazy. He's, uh, anyway. It's <laughs> crazy. So, the point is that feeling of being unsafe. I've. I still feel that to this day. Yeah. Like I look over my shoulder. I'm sure, man. Yeah. yeah. Cr- that it's, never it's, goes it's, away. It's taking that it's taking that uh, security from you, right? Hundred percent. But those feelings, like that's why I show compassion because of the bad things that have happened to me. Aside from it being traumatic or whatever, if it didn't happen to me, I wouldn't understand what it's like to be in that position. Right. So I don't put other people in that position. Yeah. And and going back to the Amparo thing, the closest I ever got to mm. that world was that show, mm. right? And just seeing the little bits that I had to kind of put myself through uh, in my head, I'm going, man, I cannot imagine, you know? Like like we had a section where where the people were leaving the country and they used to, el, 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 the fish tank, mm. which was, for those of you who don't know, it's, it was just a, a clear box that the people leaving the country would go through. It was just a glass box. And then the family members were on the other side saying goodbye to them. And, you know, they couldn't touch. They couldn't do anything. They got everything taken away from them. All their clothes, their luggages, everything. They, they left with literally the shirts on their back. And um, and we had a, a, a place in the show where it was kind of that, right? And it was, it was man, it was it was hard to watch. It was hard uh, to watch because, because of that, right? Like the security, that, like they, they just took everything from you. They're pretty good. They got yeah. mugged. <laughs> they pretty got much. mugged pretty much, right? And and it's I can't imagine I just can't imagine what that must feel like. Yeah, it's it's you it's know? a dark experience, and you almost lose faith in humanity. But that old that old Gandhi saying, right, be the change you want to see in the world. Mm-hmm. That I just that's just been the premise of my life. You know what I mean? I know what it's like to sit in a prison cell, like having fucked up your entire life, and being like, bro, what now? My family doesn't want to talk to me. You know what I mean? Like, I consider myself a total failure. And the, don't even get me started on the government. The government's like, you're a piece of shit. You're never going to get any better. You're a criminal. This is who you are. And it's like pointing the finger, pointing the finger. And it's like, it's such a dark experience. But the fact is that I had to go through that. Why? So I don't do that to other people. Yeah. So I am not a source of apathy or of evil or of darkness to other people. Yeah. And I, I severely believe that if you are the opposite of what is done to you, that if, like, instead of, oh, I am because of, or I am in spite of, mm-hmm. because words are powerful, right? Sure. If you do things in spite of what happens to you, brother, you can manifest magic in your life. 100%. You know? Agreed. It's, I just yeah. can't explain it, you know? It's, it it usually, does take work, though. It, <laughs> it's every day. <laughs> yeah. Every day, It's bubble. never ending. It's never ending, and every day you got to tell yourself that. Because we are we are creatures of habit, right? We'll go back to our. No, I mean we'll go back to whatever's easiest. And, we sabotage ourselves. We sabotage ourselves. I, listen, I'm 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 honest and humble enough to say that I do sabotage myself, mm. and she can tell you that I'm sure. You know, I do it. It's I do human it. Nature. It's part of me. It's, it's something I work on every day. There's moments like even this podcast. I'm an actor. I've been in front of five, six hundred people acting, and this podcast was scaring the shit out of me. You know, and we're just here having conversation, but. It's live, you know. But instead of so, but instead of running, I said no, 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 penalty. That's not the way that this works. Palante, full head, full steam ahead. And now look, we're here. We're having a great time. It's going to be the best podcast you have. And that's where the magic happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the magic. No, happens. but that's where the magic happens. That's where the it, magic is when it, you get in there and you literally force yourself to do that. That that man, you start like to see all this special stuff come mm. up, and you're like, oh man, that's why I'm supposed to be here. You yeah. Know? So. Yeah. There, that's that's the the meaning of life, yeah. is growth and like finding out where you're made of and and searching for meaning. I yeah, don't like doing definitely. things without meaning anymore. Like yeah. lollygagging, yeah. Like obviously it's so good. No, to, man. we're human. It, we're gonna do it's that. It's good better. to get together of and course, hang out. Of and, but for the majority, the bulk of my time is spent searching for meaning. Nice. I, I I have found so much meaning in this in yeah. doing this. I could imagine that. Yeah. The it's, conversations, the stories that you're that you're listening bro, to that are immortalized. That are yeah. That's the crazy part. How many times have you spoken to somebody? I'm like, man, I wish somebody would hear this right now. <laughs> a ton of times. Are you kidding? I get to do it all the time. I have so many great friends that have such great stories, as, you know, being actors and all that. And I'm like, man, I wish someone was here. They can listen to this. Like, this guy's like, 
you know it's it's a hundred percent a hundred percent and um, you're right you do you do get to to immortalize it and, and keep it forever I'd love to get I'd love to get a little podcast going for myself I well just, you have a friend who has a studio so yeah I, I know this is awesome bro <laughs> I'm loving this I'm loving this for definitely real. so I'm Renee this. this has been fantastic I appreciate Brother, you coming no man it's all it's, it's has all it my, been an hour already yeah una horita. wow no for real where we at 55 minutes 50 okay um so we yeah got a, little, a little a little time a little we got a little time it's cool so i uh typically it's too much it, fun to attend yeah now, i know tell me about it am i gonna have to come back i think i'm gonna have to come yeah back. yeah all yeah. right in the next project we'll I'll do like back. every six months perfect yeah that yeah. gives me time to get something get or into something. you can start your own podcast and you can do this every week and then i have you on my podcast there you go done done <laughs> you heard it here on the montana method done Love it. All righty. The, the Granado effect. The Granado. <laughs> the Granado effect. I love it. There you go. I love it. The Granado effect. There I love go. it. I, I love, love it. it. So uh, this was super fun. Bro, I had such a blast, man. Now Thank you understand you so why much. I don't come up with the material. It makes itself. Yeah, so uh, 100. Just you know? let the talk happen, man. It'll happen. It'll, It'll happen. come out. So, Renee, I always wrap up the podcast with the same three questions. Mm. So question number one. Yes. What inspires Renee Granado? Oh man, you know what's interesting? It changes. Mm. That changes every day. Like just certain things, she inspires me. I see her hustle. You know, um, I love that she's around other people that hustle, like yourself, awesome. um, and that inspires me to hustle. You know, um, just for her, I need to hustle for her and, and mm. the kids, and uh, and what we have. My family inspires me. I look up to my sister. She's my rock. You know, again, I'm not going to get emotional because <laughs> I tend to do that because she's what I had when, you know, the mm. folks passed. Mm. Um, my nieces and nephews, they inspire me. That's awesome. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I try to look for that inspiration everywhere. You know what I mean? They say behind every great man, there's a great woman, right? Great woman, great family. You would do things for her you would never do for yourself. For nobody else. A hundred percent. Oh. 100% I would do so, whatever yeah. for her. Um, but yeah, man, I, I just try to find inspiration in everything. You know what I mean? Comics. I like to find inspiration in comics, Comedy. films, music. You know? Like as an actor, you, you, you tend to find music that'll get you in that moment. So like if you got to get into an audition, right, mm -hmm. and you need to be in a certain state of mind, you find that song that'll get you, reminds you of the past, reminds you, you know, whatever. And, and you get, it allows you to get into that movie, that moment. 100%. So sometimes when I really need to, you know, sometimes you got some bullshit auditions that you go and you... You know, you've done a million of them, like commercial auditions type of thing, which are great. They pay the bills. Right, you know, right, I'm of not, course. I'm not, I'm not bitching, and I'm super grateful to be on set. But there's some other auditions that, you know, take a little more, you know, got to get in a little deeper. Get in the zone. And that's what I use. Yeah, music. Yeah. Typically, before my guests get here, I like to sit in here alone for five minutes. Yeah. In the darkness. Yeah. It's, it's again, the darkness, right? No, Bubba, I know. The light's off. I'm not talking to anybody, and yeah. I'm just sitting here and just like, all right. Real quick, just because I know we're short on time, but... Uh, I did a show in Georgia called Swindlers. Okay. It was my first show out of Florida mm. and uh, as the lead, and it was a farce. I've never done a farce in my life. Never done comedy like that. Nelson, bro, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Mm. Like the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. I, I honestly thought they had chosen the wrong guy. Wow. Like that's how hard it was for me, that I literally at one moment thought, I think Should they I chose the this? wrong dude, you know? Yep. But... I stuck to that. I fucking went straight for it. And I said, I'm not going to give this up because I have too much writing on it. Mm -hmm. And I, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not, it's not who I am. It's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I would, after every audition, I would go home and I would just sit in the sofa, ask her. I wouldn't call her. I would finish at 8.30. I wouldn't call her to about 10, 10.30. Because for two hours, I would just lay, like literally with my feet on the ground and just lean, like just laid back in the, in a silence, just in silence. Because I needed that moment to, to ground yourself. To ground myself again. Mm. And I think everybody should do that. It takes those few minutes for yourself. Ground yourself. It works. I know it sounds like a bunch of babble and, you know, higher up type stuff, but sit with yourself for five minutes. A lot of people can't do that. A lot of people can't sit with themselves, mm. you know? But if you do, man, you're going to find out so much about yourself. Yep. You know? I remember I follow this page called Grim Hustle. I'll show mm -hmm. it to you later. It's basically a Russian mob boss that gives... Uh, advice. Oh, I, probably, I think I've seen him. Bro, fantastic. I think I've seen him. This guy's like, bro, who is this? Like Socrates' grandson? This I think guy. I've seen him. No, he gives advice that you're just like. So I remember this one clip. He's like, every man needs to follow this. Spend 15 minutes 
per day in the silence. No talk. Just silence. Yeah. And I was like, so by accident, what I one morning I was driving to work and I forgot to turn on the radio just because I had a lot on my mind. Yeah. Like of the things I had to do that day. Yeah. And I got to work. And I was like, oh wow, that was nice. And now I do it every morning. I don't turn on the radio. Nothing. It's that's the only thing I can hear is like my car. Just my car driving and and that morning process of just letting being alone. Letting that silence. Yeah. I spent Bro, if I tell you how much time I spend alone, you think I'm crazy. I spend like 35, 40% of my day alone. I believe it. And I believe that. It's, I'm not scared of being alone. No, no, you know, no. Once you lose that fear of, I don't need to be around other people and you're okay, you, you, you rediscover your imagination mm -hmm. and like that creative side of you is really where it comes from because we live in a society where we're constantly like stimulated mm -hmm. by videos and images and the phone and this and that and Bente yeah. Mikosa. So now it's like when you're alone, you actually let your brain formulate its own perspective and opinions, and you it can process it right. It processes the information. It has to process. She she yeah. we, we, she knows that I like I like my alone time, and she's amazing. She even tells me, "You want to be alone for a while," because <laughs> she knows she knows that I like that alone time. You know, because I'm like you, I kind of need to process things. A Brother, lot. I'm on the dating scene. Let me tell you, yeah, these streets are, are ugly. <laughs> Hold on to that, because it's not hot. Caliente, <laughs> All right. Ay, Dios mío. So, so question, question number two, what's uh, next for Mr. Granado? Uh, well, right now, um, I have a, I, I got a couple auditions coming up. Can't really Ooh. talk too much about them because, uh, okay. you know. Um, They're in the works. In the works. Uh, but I just finished, like I said, I just finished doing a couple of auditions for some commercials. And I'm in the running for them. I have, don't have a final booked booked. Uh, tag yet but i think i feel pretty positive about it we'll see awesome you know i i don't like to i kind of like i've learned been at this for 15 years now and i've kind of learned that you go to your auditions and you just leave and you go next mm -hmm. because so much can happen Th think about what you guys do here right how many things can go can go wrong here I that mean, you guys we, have to think about we deal with them okay. all the time so now imagine if you're thinking of, if you're dealing with a person and you need to make sure that all that stuff that you're dealing with fits that person mm -hmm. like those are your odds so the best you can do is come in, do your best work, which means being prepared at mm -hmm. home, learning your lines, going through your process. Why is my character saying this? Why is he doing that? Why is he doing this? Why are they doing it? Try and build that. Whether it's right or wrong, it's your thoughts, right? Right. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Just you do your thing. Get in that room. You do your thing. And then you leave. Right. And I learned this from a teacher. Next. Because you have no control once that door closes. None. The only thing you have control over is yourself. Is that moment. Is that is that moment. That's why you have to be prepared because that's all the chance you're going to get. Mm. And you even say, and, I, and they teach you, you know, you do your audition and then you say, hey, is there, any, is, is there something else you'd like to see? Would you like to see me do it another way? Because that'll give you a second opportunity to do it, right? And you're, and you're there to, to, to give, you're there mm. to be the man for, or woman for them, right? Or person for them. So... You give them that opportunity. You give them that, right? And the, but then once that door closes, bro, leave. Te vas ahí tranquilo. Go, go to your family. Go have your dinner. Go to your next audition. Whatever it is, pero let it go. Porque yeah. you don't know what happens. I've heard stories, bro. The director didn't like the guy because the ear reminded him of the new boyfriend from his ex girlfriend. <laughs> like so crazy, bro. Do? Crazy stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just gotta let it go, and you go on. And I think honestly, it's helped me deal with life too. I just let it go, and go on to the next thing. Bro, that's so important, letting things go, right? Because so much is out of our control in life in general, bro. Not even in this room. Control in is life. You wake up in the morning, God forbid, car accident. Mm. Yeah. So the whole, so the whole idea. But what are you going to do? You're going to be like, no, bro, you got to keep moving. Get the car, take it to the thing, get your, uh, you know, and you just got to. And, bro, everything in acting is like that. You just got to keep moving. And if you get the job, great. If you don't, move on to the next. next. And if you don't ever get jobs, but carajo, bro, you weren't meant to be the actor. It wasn't for you. You get your real job, and then you audition for plays, and at night you do your passion. It's unfortunate, but it's the truth. And I'm prepared for that, you know? I get it. Why would you why would you put all your money or bet all your eggs on me at this age when you have 20 year olds that you can bet on for 30 years? Mm. I gotta be realistic about it, you know? They do need older actors. I've been in the business for a while now. So I'm okay. Tu me entiende? But you just gotta be realistic, you know? Hundred percent. You gotta remember there's always money behind everything, bro. Oh, of course. And so why are you gonna money put, makes the, the world go around? Money right? makes the world go around. So why are you, why are you gonna bet your you know why are you gonna bet that on you know mm. instead of that twenty year old that you can 
really mold into what you want your, your business to be. You know, so it's 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 kind of a the double edged sword. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, but as long as you're co you're conscious of the fact that control is a joke, control is a hundred percent, bro. Control is a joke. You just gotta enjoy yourself. Only that so concept much you can has control. made me. Such a different human being, Rene. Yeah. Like, no, I believe you. Whenever I'm like, <laughs> yeah. What are you trying to control? You got bro? no control, Bubble. Nothing. 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 Do your best and that's it. And everybody's just trying to do the same thing, right? Everybody's just trying to do their best. So, you know, sometimes you get mad at somebody and you get angry. I do, bro. I got I got my temper. You know what I'm saying? And then I sometimes get pissed off at something and then I'm thinking about, why am I getting pissed off at this guy? Like, I, I maybe he's having a horrible day, you know? And you never oh. know. You know? Pero como está la calle ahora, no te pongo a hablar con nadie porque te meten un sopapo <laughs> sin pensarlo dos veces. So mejor no decir nada. Right? No, 100%. <laughs> Better not to say anything Lesson for my non-Spanish speakers. No, yeah, 100%. Better not to say anything sometimes, bro. And my friend, last question. Yes, sir. How would you like to be remembered when you're no longer here? Man, you know what? I really don't... Uh, just as a decent person, man. Mm -hmm. Someone that was there for their friends and their loved ones and was loyal and a good friend and just someone that would you know just be there for you you know unfortunately I, I you know i and i hope that what what i have put on film or what i have shown to the public on stage stays with them and resonates with them and, and they remember oh man i remember that guy he was such a great actor you know because i you know I, i haven't found my comic book yet i guess it's coming but it's coming yeah one day For sure. Everybody, my favorite and line. And if not, bro, I know that I've lived my life the way I've wanted to live it. That's the most important thing. And do I have regrets? Sure, everybody has regrets. The best part is to just keep doing it and see what happens, bro. My just favorite. remember life is short, right? Oh, my God. That's that's a key. It's over in a blink of an eye. Don't let it just sit there. Just my, do my favorite line from Scarface is every dog has his day. And it's true. It's the truth. Before, I used to... Most people see that line and they think like, "Oh, every dog has his day." Like he's calling Frank a dog, and it's like you uh, right. He's gonna and he's gonna decide. Right. If you look at the, there's another side to that line. Every dog has his day. Like I'm the underdog. I was supposed to be dead. I was supposed and to look at me now. drown on the way here. Yeah. I lived in a tent. Now it's my turn. Right. And that for me is the reflection of the person who's in in that pursuit. Stay on it, because every dog has his day. Yeah, and, uh, and to be perfectly honest, bro, uh, uh, yes, I would love to have the, the 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 you know the big credits and the name and the movies and and all that stuff. But I'm happy, bro. I'm happy. Yeah. I'm, I'm really happy. We moved into a beautiful home that we call ours now, and we have two great kids. I have a wonderful woman, great family, doing what I love. You're one of, among the wealthiest men in the world, my bro. Brother. I'm a one percenter, dog. Hands down, one percenter. Beautiful. You know. And I'll yeah. end it like that. All righty, guys. That's a good one. Oh, definitely. Thank you for coming. I <laughs> Bubble, appreciate you, my brother. Yeah, Manu, I appreciate you, definitely. bro. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. We'll this do this more, and, and we'll talk about doing your podcast, The Granado Effect. I, I look forward to it. <laughs> I look forward to it. All righty, guys. Uh, before I wrap up, so, Rene, how can people connect with you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Rene Granado underscore official because it's only one. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. So thank you again for tuning in to another episode of the Montana Method Podcast with my special guest, Rene Granado. Thank you, my man. As always, with the same message, push it to the limit. The world is yours. And if you are not chasing a dream, life is meaningless, my friends. Until next week, say goodnight to the bad guy. <laughs> Rags to riches came from rags to riches. Rags to riches came from.